absolutely am to a point where I feel like I deserve it. I have put in work and I have done things that I didn't even think I would be capable of. And so not only do I feel like I've deserved it, but I know that I've earned it. Otherwise I wouldn't be here. And I know that though the things that I receive and the greatness and the peace that comes in my life today is because of the work that I've done. And I don't think there's any other way I could have gotten there. So I, I had talked about, been able to talk about my story a little bit just through people that I was close with. And through that, um, I was directed to a therapist and I didn't, I didn't know what that would look like. I didn't know what direction that would take. But part of me going on this journey meant that I had to do things that I didn't actually know what it would look like and sometimes that's kind of scary because I'm the type of person that I want I want results you tell me exactly what I need to do to get what I want and I will do that and um, this whole journey has not been <laughs> anything like that at all in fact it's been almost opposite it's been like you just trust the process and you go and for me that's really difficult to do so Going to that, going from what I was to who I am, it seems like I could have never seen that that's how it would have worked out. But during therapy, I committed. I committed to the process. Um, I really engaged with my therapist. She seemed like someone that I felt comfortable talking to. She understood me. She um, had not been through the same trauma I had been, obviously, but she had um, she was able to understand and show compassion and show love and then also correct me when I was getting off track or when my path wasn't in line with what she was trying to teach me. Um, I went every single week to therapy for sometimes two hours a week, one to two hours and I did that for like eight months and then kind of figured, okay, she, my therapist even said to me, which I think is really key of a good therapist, she said, um, I want you to take the things that you learned and I want you to not live in the shadows of therapy and I want you to use them, like take a break, let's not schedule our next appointment. And when things come up, try to work through it with the things that I've taught you. It wasn't a certain moment for me that I decided I was a survivor. It was a culmination of um, putting friends in my life that lifted me up and that gave me encouragement. It was spending time with my kids that made me feel like it's worth it to be with them and to invest in them and to go through these sad things so that I can have meaningful relationships with them. It's my husband taking the time to let me know that he's proud of me and those things wouldn't have happened if I just kept moving on the path of where I was going, what I was doing. And becoming a survivor is, it just means you're strong and when I've never felt that before I mean not only did like nobody ever told me that but I never felt it myself and I don't need people to tell me you're strong and you're brave to know that I am I know that when I have moments of clarity it's because I've done some really hard things that have given me the strength to be a survivor and that happens with hard work and I don't even know if I could say like a specific moment that I'm like yes I'm a survivor I just know that the work that I've done has brought me to be a survivor there's songs I listen to that like 
like anthems in my head and I can say, yep, yeah, this, is, this is how it feels. It's, it's a good feeling. So when I do have bad days, which I think forever, I'll have a bad day every once in a while. I think that's not something that will ever go away. Um, I think as they come up, maybe, maybe where it used to be small things that could totally ruin my day, maybe it'll be more bigger things that'll give me a bad day. And I don't even think that it's an entire day, but I have definitely have anchored myself in things that bring me out of that bad day. And I have little touchstones that help bring me out of that. Um, I have a group of very, very close friends that have seen all of all of this mess sometimes. I can be very open with my husband about things that are bringing me down and if there's something that I just need a little booster for, he's somebody that I call and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking, I need that. That is one of those touchstones that I have. Um, my kids, they give me feelings that when they're not even here, I can reach out and I can feel and take those things to bring me up to where I need to be. Each of my kids, I have something special with each of them. Um, Miles is my youngest and he has so much good energy inside of him that when I'm with him, I feel like I can breathe in his energy. And he does this thing called diamond kisses and he kisses me on my forehead and my right cheek and my left cheek and my chin and then double diamond is my nose. I have let him know, Miles, your diamond kisses make me feel so special and make me feel so loved. That kid will not go to bed without diamond kisses. He will not get out of the car to go to school without giving me diamond kisses. And then when I'm home alone throughout the day and maybe I'm having a sad day, I am able to draw from that that he gave me that morning or the night before. And I can say, you know what? I may not have a great relationship with my mom, but what I do have is an amazing relationship with my kids. Smith, one of Smith's greatest physical qualities is his cheeks. And they are the softest, softest things ever. And Smith is very um, serious. He's a very serious kid. He's very opposite of Miles. They're like oil and water. But Smith lets me into that space. He doesn't let anybody into his facial space. But the fact that he lets me in, it is also something that I draw from in times that I'm sad. Um, and Nora, my oldest, I worry the most about my relationship with her because I want the exact opposite of the relationship that I've had. And so her and I, we just spend time together and we just talk about anything she wants to talk about. She loves Taylor Swift and so we're always singing Taylor Swift songs. And as she grows up, she's taller than me now and that is something that is crazy as it makes me feel, I let her relish in the fact that she's taller than her mom. And some of the special things that we have, I just know that those things are going to let them know in times of sadness that their mom loves them. And it's also something that makes me feel so good. Sharing the joy is something that makes, makes it all worth it. Like I, I can't not share the joy. Like, I mean, you can ask my family, you can ask my friends, like you can you can look and you can tell how I'm doing today. And for the most part, it's joyful. And I'll be honest, there are days when they're, they're not joyful, but guess what? When it's not good, you can tell that too. You can see that, okay, she's having a day that's not so great. And that happens. And I'm, I welcome those days because those are the days where I can really reflect on where I've been and then I can, I know what I need to do to turn it around so that it is a good day.